Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. So glad to be with you today. Hope everything's going really good for you and your family. And this is the last day that Pam Stencil will be with us. Uh, you've been with us this week. She's been my guest Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and this is Friday. And I'm sure that a lot of you have watched her every day, but if this is your first time to see Pam, they call her the sex lady. And the reason is she has addressed more than a half a million young people and encouraging purity and to stay chaste before the Lord until marriage and teaching them the ways of the Lord. And what, what a needed ministry. I was just thinking, some of you are squirming because you're my age and, and you're thinking, oh, I wish she wouldn't see that. But see, say that, but my, my mom never talked about it. My generation didn't talk about it much, but you better talk about it today. It's a whole different world and they need to be taught the things of the Lord and the importance of living his way. So I want to um, offer you a special book called Sex Has a Price Tag. Before I do, though, we've got the most unusual recipe we've ever done today. And that's all I'm going to say about it. We'll surprise you. OK, now I'll get back to my book. All right. This is your gift for uh, uh, this is yours for a gift of at least $15 to the program. It's one of the most important books we've ever offered. I hope you'll take advantage of it if you haven't done so earlier this week. And um, it's very well done. It's done in a way that uh, young people can understand. And <laughs> I think the old people need to understand too. Okay, information's on your screen. Uh, you can use the 800 number or the address and we will get it right out to you. And now the surprised recipe. It's crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Two ingredients. Two ingredients. Biscuits. Mm -hmm. It's self-rising flour and heavy whipping cream. That's it. So let I, I'm 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 super interested to see how it tastes. So are you ready for this mm -hmm. difficult recipe? Yes. First of all, let me tell you, don't don't wear stuff like this when you're <laughs> cooking. Okay? It's driving me out of my mind. But live and learn. You'll you'll be fine. Something told me this morning. Don't wear that shirt. <laughs> Do I listen to my inner voice? This I do is not. a little small voice. Yeah, so this is one and a third, one and three quarter cups self rising, self -rising flour, mm -hmm. a cup of heavy cream, and I'm just gonna mix it all up and then I'm gonna roll it out. And I'm gonna use a cup since we didn't have biscuit cutters. And we, I was amazed at two ingredients, but Stephanie told me you have made biscuits with mayonnaise. Mayonnaise and flour. That's it. it that I came from an old southern cookbook when you could eat like that because you worked out in the fields. Mm -hmm. were, were they good? They were so good. So good. And then this is melted butter. Uh -huh. I looked at it earlier and I thought, why is there orange juice sitting out on the cabin? <laughs> she, Seriously, my Do you brain. need glasses maybe? No, I just need a new brain. No. Oh. Well. Okay, so you just mix the two ingredients I've together. Never, never heard of I'm a brain implant. Well. Maybe we need it. It looks just like any other biscuit dough. Ooh, but and my, don't let me forget my wedding rings. I'm and the, uh, of course, I believe in whipping cream for anything. Anything. Mm -hmm. She loves her love whipping, whipping cream. cream. So I'm just going to put this out on some flour. That's I don't been... like that junk you buy from the freezer. Cool like whip, cool whip, yeah. cool yeah. whip. <laughs> well, I think the cool whip actually is a real product. Some of the rest of it, I think it's plastic. Okay. Don't so. quote me on that, but I think it is. Oh, we're quoting you. Yeah, Our thing yeah. Rippy said it. Yeah. Seriously. Okay, so I'm just going to It roll. looks just like any It's other. crazy, uh -huh. right? I just can't wait to taste it. Uh -huh. So this will make six biscuits. We don't have a biscuit cutter, so I'm just using a cup. Mm -hmm. That is a glass. Or uh -huh. a glass. Mm -hmm. or so. A glass. Okay, so half an inch thick. Well, okay. I wonder what else you could use. If you use mayonnaise and you can use whipping yeah, cream, I'm what else well, can you use? Back in the day, you use whatever you can, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's... Mm -hmm. Look, that's it. It looks like a... And perfect. it's a sprayed pan. Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So break those biscuits out. Get them, mm -hmm. sister. Mm -hmm. Be careful, the pan is hot. Yes, and they're beautiful. They are... Look at them! Well, they've got whipped cream in them. They have to be good. And I have more butter right here. Uh huh. You want it? Let's stop. Yeah, let's oh. oh, it's beautiful. Look, it's standing. <laughs> <laughs> O-M-G. 
Gee, uh -huh. look at that. They, they seem so flaky. Oh my. Is it so good? I've never had a better biscuit My hands that. are a mess, but I, I need right. to try this. <laughs> that is insanity. Mm -hmm. And you can believe her. You uh, put some honey on that, uh -huh. you're golden. Oh my gosh. I have gosh. never had a better biscuit. Two ingredients, he well, heavy whipping cream. There mm -hmm. you go. Yeah. So good. Oh, I wish I had some marmalade. I wish I had some honey. Mm -hmm. I have honey upstairs. I might take a little piece upstairs. I wonder. So good. I know it, and, and look how beautiful they They're are. They're gorgeous. And you bake them at 500 degrees. 500 so. degrees, eight to 10 minutes. Watch them, because it went from not done to done quickly. Mm -hmm. So keep an eye on them. And we're gonna put a little butter on yep. the top I'm of them. I'm gonna put melted put butter in. over the top and put them in the oven, 500 so, degrees. If you, it's a, it's one cup of whipping cream, one and three cup, quarter, one th one cup and three quarters. Yes. Self rising flour. Self rising. That's it. That's it. But <laughs> if you need the recipe, <laughs> if you're like me and you probably wouldn't be able to remember that, uh, we'll be glad to, to send it, it to you. That information is coming up on your screen. We'll send it to you. But uh, we strongly recommend it. And after this, uh, you're going to hear you know my final conversation with Pam. D Stenzel, and I am so thankful for her and her ministry. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, Pam has been with us for the last four days, and we'd kind of like to um, recap uh, some of the things we've discussed and also uh, some very, very important things uh, to close out this week. I so appreciate, so appreciate oh, you doing this. I, boy, this is so important, and I hope yeah. the grandmas and the moms watching this um, I know I pray for every family member every morning. Mm -hmm. That's one thing Absolutely. we can do. Pray, pray, I, pray. I said I can even pray for every great-grandchild great and I don't have to have a checklist. Oh. <laughs> I got eight of them and I know all their names. So. That's awesome. Um, Beautiful. We began uh, just uh, by talking really about um, the consequences and also uh, you gave the best I've ever heard on the diseases mm -hmm. and to... Uh, the, the, it's no small thing when you when you live an immoral life. You right. you're, you're tearing down everything. You're tearing down your emotions. You're tearing down your whole sense of self, and you're tearing down your body. Yeah, and and what it is and is your spirit. Yeah, God God gave you your sexuality. He created us mm -hmm. male and female. He created this gave us this amazing gift mm -hmm. of being able to express mm -hmm. that intimacy. In fact, in the New Testament, Christ talks about us as His bride. He mm -hmm. is our bride groom right and so there's constant reference to this amazing special gift mm -hmm. of husband and wife mm -hmm. and that's where sex belongs and when sex happens in that context mm -hmm. it is awesome mm -hmm. outside of that there's going to be a lot of pain mm -hmm. and it's so important that sexual integrity is what's really what we're talking about and then we talked about you know the wages of sin because there's physical consequences um, and then the pornography and all the things that can drag us down. But the reality is that, that sexual integrity, which is what God's calling us to, boundary around mm -hmm. sex, reserving it for that one partner, mm -hmm. that one marriage partner, the sacrament of marriage, mm -hmm. it, that, that that's something we have to practice for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when, when I come and speak and they're like, oh, she's the teen speaker, you know, it's for, for teens. Mm -hmm. This isn't for teens, this is for all of us. God's boundary is for everyone. Look, the unfaithfulness in marriage. That's exactly right. So, so the boundary is don't have sex. If you're married, you can have sex, but only with the person, person you're married <laughs> to, right? Not everybody else. So, so one of the things that I, I want kids to understand, we have a generation right now because they've seen so much divorce mm -hmm. and so much yeah. infidelity in their parents 
that when you talk about marriage and faithfulness, they act like that's a fairy tale mm -hmm. that that can't possibly happen. And that's my generation's fault. It, it's my generation that that lived this life that we thought we could have sex with whoever exactly. we wanted, no big deal. And someday we, I think we actually believed that we would do all of these things. And someday we'd put a white dress on, he'd put a great tux on, we'd say magic words in front of a pastor, and now we would be able to control what we never controlled back there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Sexual integrity has to be practiced for your life. And if you can't practice sexual integrity before you're married, what makes you think you're going to practice it later? One of my favorite pastors, he has a pr pretty big congregation out in Long Island. And he told me, he goes, every couple that comes to my church to get married, they're coming in, they're going to want to get married at the church, has to sit down with him first and do some counseling. He said, the very first thing I tackle, the first thing I ask the couple is this, are you having sex or are you living together? And if they say yes to either of those things, this very wise pastor looks at him and says this, you've both told each other by your behavior. By your behavior, you've both told each other that you are perfectly comfortable having sex with someone you're not married to. Weddings don't fix that. See, oh, wow. your boundary for sex. I want to meet him. He's amazing. And, and, and your boundary isn't marriage and commitment. Your boundary is what, how you feel. Mm -hmm. well, that, that doesn't last. That doesn't last in anybody's marriage. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a stronger boundary than that. And one of the things I think we talked about earlier, but I, I talk to, to students about all the time, is that opposites might attract when it comes to personality, not right. character. You're going to get what you are. So sometimes even Christian kids will say, well, I'm not going to wait to have sex until I'm married because it's so hard, mm -hmm. and I'll never find somebody who waited for me. Really? Want to guarantee that? Sleep around. Because mm -hmm. you're going to get exactly what you are. Mm -hmm. So do not think that the choices that you're making before you walk that aisle will not affect what you do later. And if you live kind of loosely uh, before you get married, why would... Uh a few vows change that. It, it doesn't. And, and I think part of it, too, is not understanding. I mean, I, I travel for work. I, I tend to be in hotels a mm -hmm. lot. I mean, you know, people are going to throw yourself, themselves at you as adults. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't get to just say, oh, yeah, well, my mm -hmm. husband's 500 miles mm -hmm. away. There was a USA Today article absolutely astounded me. It's about maybe seven years ago that said business women, there are more women on the road now. It used mm -hmm. to be mostly men that travel, but now there's... A, so now the new sexual ethic for us adults in business who are mm -hmm. traveling is that it's okay to have sex outside of your marriage right. as long as you're five, about 500 miles away from home and it's not someone in your company. Like that's their ethic now? I'm like, this is Good ridiculous. Good grief, who would come up with anything the, like that? But, but see, that their point again is, it's the attitude of, it's okay to do whatever you want, just don't get caught, mm -hmm. right? That's our big, that's what we taught our kids for years. Just here's a condom, here's all of these things, mm -hmm. just don't get caught. Or, it, or if, if the person never knows, mm -hmm. well, how is that okay? And what happens if some businessman or woman on the road ends up with an STD? They come home to their spouse. It, this isn't acceptable. None of it's acceptable. But what's important, I think, for us in communicating with students is for them to understand very carefully that they're, these single years, whatever they are, are preparing you for the strength of character that it's going to take for you to be the man or woman of integrity as mm -hmm. a husband or a wife down the road. And I just want to charge anybody that's listening, whether it's a Sunday school teacher, youth pastor, pastor, uh, let's begin to preach sin. Yeah. Uh, let's 100%. begin to preach the, the whole Bible. And uh, as I was watching your videos, I, I was thinking uh, about those young people that were listening to you. And they were glued to watch. But I had this sense, now I wonder if there's some in there who have already slipped. Right. Well, They've made a mistake. No, I'm not going to call it a mistake. It's a sin. Right. We keep it's calling sin, sin yep. a mistake. Uh, mistakes dialing the wrong telephone number. Right, right. Uh, sin yeah. is something else. But I wouldn't want to close this without letting them know that Jesus' blood <laughs> covers that's All right. of this. So, so that's the gospel. So we, you can't bring in the healing and the grace of God if we haven't addressed the sin. So right. the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That's why he went to the cross. Mm -hmm. So I always love the New Testament scriptures. I love Jesus with women. If you get an opportunity to study Jesus with women, you'll see the most amazing grace. And the, the woman at the well was one of the better ones where 
where he said, if, if you knew who was asking you for water, you would ask me because I have water and you'll never be thirsty again. And she said, well, I want that. He goes, go get your husband, come back and I'll tell you. He goes, I don't have one. And Jesus put his finger right on her pain. He said, yeah, you're right, because you've had seven husbands and the guy you're shacking up with, you're not married to. Yeah. Well, Jesus, that wasn't very nice and tolerant. <laughs> yeah, right. But what he was doing was saying to her these words. I think she heard it in her heart. Are you tired yet, sweetheart? How many men are you going to have to go through before you realize that those men will never meet the deepest needs of your heart? Only I can do that. And Jesus with the woman caught in adultery who was dragged at his feet is so powerful. These men said she was a whore, that she deserved to be stoned. And they said, what do you say? And Jesus said, if you're without sin, throw your rocks right here. Boy, they took off. And they left. <laughs> And Jesus looked down at this woman, and I've often wondered what it would have been like to be her in that minute, to, to feel so shamed and to be laying in front of this holy rabbi, Jesus himself. And he said, woman, where are your accusers? She said, they're gone, Lord. And hear the words of Jesus. He said this, neither do I condemn you. Get up and keep thinking that men are going to meet your needs. Get up and think the next guy you have sex with is going to stay around next mm -hmm. time. Get up and use a condom. Mm -hmm. Is that what he said? No. He said, get up and sin no more. Yeah. If no it weren't more. possible... Yeah. For her to never sin again, you know, why would he have asked her to do it? Mm -hmm. He said it because she could. She could, yes. Because every one of us, no matter what we've done, can experience the grace of God, the forgiveness that comes from the cross, and get up off from that floor and never be. Do you know, I wonder when preachers preach that, uh, they need to put more, Jesus said two things. I don't condemn you. Right. And go and sin no more. Those are equal. Hey, come on, Important. let's preach against the, n no more sin. Right. Quit, quit the sin. And sinning. the power that the cross gives us to live free from the sin. We, we are not slaves to sin. We don't have to continue to sin. God's grace and power in the cross get, frees us from that bondage. I know. I've said this on the program more than once through the years, but I, I, as a church leader, you know, you run into these people that beat themselves up forever for something they did when they were 18 years old. And I'm telling you, once you take that to the cross, it's gone. It's gone. It is absolutely gone. And I, I think I figured out what it was. There's, it's kind of a little pride that, well, my sin is. <laughs> yeah, like I'm really bad. I'm, I, yeah, mine's worse. <laughs> uh, and the thought came to me, it's not the cross plus anything. It's no. the cross. Your sin isn't that wonderful. No. Your sin isn't that much bigger than anybody else. That's right. That's right. The blood covers your covers sin, yours, the like mine, and everyone your else's. Absolutely. And we can live free from that, not only from the sin, but from the pain it causes. And that's the, that's the beauty of the gospel. One little girl ran up to me. She goes, I'm a recycled virgin. <laughs> <Just laugh. laughs> and, and, you know, she said, I knew it was wrong. And I asked Jesus to forgive me. Oh, and okay. then that day I made a commitment to, to God and to me and to my future husband that I would never have sex again until the day I was married. I said, sweetheart, that's amazing. Hey, we have a couple minutes. Can you pull up? I bet you've gotten all kinds of testimonies yes. through the years. Yeah. You know, the yeah. kids, I think they just want us to be honest, be yeah. plain, understand. They do. Yeah. And you know, for the for the ones that maybe needed that healing and to have their lives turn around, it's amazing. And, and I get a lot of those letters where, and, and that's why I love working with teenagers, because if I can turn their lives around at mm -hmm. 15 or 16, if they were starting the wrong path, mm -hmm. I've got a lot of years to get them going in the right direction yes. and, and, and pain. But then there's also those kids who are doing the right thing. I, I mean, I want to give some encouragement. A lot of our students are making right choices. Keep it up. And, and we need to encourage them, like, good for you. One young man chased me down the hall of his school. The boy was 6'8". I mean, that's a giant in my world. <laughs> He, he, he's, he's yelling, virgin, you know, and I said, you, you don't miss a senior in high school yelling virgin at you that that's tall. Especially the guy. Yeah, but you know what he said? He said, it's easy for girls, Pam, to tell people they're virgins, but you don't know what it's like for a boy. You don't right. hear the locker room talk and all the mocking I get. I said, young man, the next time your friends start to tease you because you're saving yourself for your wife, I want you to look at your friends and say this, any day, tonight, I could choose to be like you, mm -hmm. but you will never again be like me. You know, that that's something good. special he can hang on to. Uh, one of the verses I always give kids, I memorize, the, well, I memorize the whole New Testament, but this verse I put on my dorm right above the door, like when I would walk out, Philippians 4.13, it says this, I can do all things Amen. through Christ who gives me the strength. We have in our faith and what Jesus gives us in the Holy Spirit, the strength we need to live holy lives in a really unholy culture. Yes, and culture keeps telling us, if it feels good, do it. Do, you know, you deserve to be happy. And uh, if that's what you want to do, that's fine and all that. But boy, God calls us such a higher place. Calls us higher. to holiness, holiness.
And you know, I think Debbie Boone started the "It can't be wrong if it feels yeah. so right," right? Because you like, we can't base things on our feelings. We base mm -hmm. things on what's true, mm -hmm. and 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 that's true in everywhere. I mean, I've had kids tell me they don't feel forgiven because they still have an STD or they still yeah. have herpes. I'm like, it doesn't matter how you feel. You've been forgiven. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be healed from that. It's called heaven. Mm -hmm. But you'll be healed from that. So, so we don't base our faith on feelings. But when we base our faith on truth and we walk in the way God's called us, he brings us joy. He brings us joy. Yes, and I like to encourage the viewers just regularly, just pray for your kids. Pray. I've Absolutely. got uh, two grandsons that are not married, mm -hmm. and uh, they're such good Mm. I had one of them the other day. He's on his own now. And I said, he lives in St. Pete. And I said, well, I'll do your laundry. So he brings my laundry. In. Oh, nice. And I thought, I'm going to, you know, I want to give him, I want to bless him. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's trying to make it on his own. He doesn't make a lot of money. So I said, if you'll follow me to the filling station, I'll fill up your car. $42. I know. That's, it's to expensive fill up, to fill up. He must have had two teaspoons of gas in that tank. Oh, you know. bless it. Anyway, for them, I pray. Mm. I said, Lord, I know you speak in a still, small voice. But if they go, I yell at them. Mm. What, whatever you have to do, mm. Lord. And I think that um, I want to remind parents and grandparents yeah. how powerful prayer is it is so powerful and grandparents can i just say this you matter mm -hmm. i mean i know i mean i had a wonderful mother who prayed as well but i'll tell you my grandma my mom's mom you know m when you're a teenager your mom's words are like oh whatever mom's talking again but if my grandma spoke it mm -hmm. i heard it you know and so grandparents you matter that generational just involvement in your kids life and and pray we all you know on our knees yes pray. and the truth is that even in this swampy society, and uh, my sister and I were talking yesterday. I said, if we could call daddy back from heaven, he wouldn't would recognize anything around here. <laughs> it's so corrupt. It, it's yeah. just, uh, you know, we go along with it day by day, but if it was just presented to you just all at once, you know, I can't believe this. Yeah. But it is, it's bad. Yeah. But greater is he. Greater is he. And you know what? We pray for our kids, and then I, I don't know about you, but I'm regularly saying, Maranatha, Jesus, come. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Go. Come I take ready. us home. But uh, we've got about one more minute, and I just want to thank you so much and pray that God gives you health and strength and everything you need to continue. I don't know of a more important message, and you deliver it so well. Oh, you, thank you. You know, sometimes speakers don't grab your attention that much but i watched those kids riveted and the parents to what you had to say so i'm asking you to pray for pam mm. i think that the lord has anointed her with something so needed right now and we're honored honored to Thanks. have you honored i so appreciate you. It. and you stay with me i have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy you may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. This has been quite a week here at Homekeepers, and I am so thankful that the Lord crossed my path with that of Pam Stenzel. Her story is just unbelievable to think she's the product of rape. And she said she wants to meet that birth mother. She's never met her. But what a courageous lady she must have been. That She says, I'm going to bring this child into the world. And look how the Lord is using her after she worked nine years in a crisis pregnancy center. And now God has her out going all over the world for the purpose of getting the message of purity to our young people. And you know she needs a lot of help, and the help at home, the help at the church that will keep this message out in front of the young people all the time. That's why we're offering you this book by Pam, Sex Has a Price Tag. And she has really explained that. I, I, I almost got chills when she talked about all of the diseases, most of them viruses. You'll never be rid of them. 
and you might play and play and play for a few years and then you decide you want to be righteous and you marry a righteous girl or a righteous boy and uh, you give the disease to them and pregnancy and abortion it's all tied into this ministry that she has so I want to offer you this book one more time for that gift of $15 it spells out the cost and it can be disease it could be pregnancy or abortion but also there's a great cost to your soul when you do not live the way God designed us to live you can have this book for a gift of at least $15 and if you write a check, write to Home Keepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Or call us at 1-800-229-0059. You know, I uh, read the scriptures every morning. And I'm in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians right now. And the Apostle Paul just makes it so clear that when you have illicit sex... It's a sin against the body. It's, it's a whole different sin than any of the others that are outlined in Scripture. Because there's really an emotional tie. There, there's a bond that comes with the sex act. And you don't want to have a lot of those bonds and ties when you're younger. So parents, it's time for you to talk. As I mentioned at the top of the show, my mom couldn't talk about it. I wasn't too good. And, but it's out in the open now. Any young man can get any kind of pornography on his phone for the most part. And the Bible's very, very plain about that. You know, when you watch pornography, it lifts a chemical in the brain and it'll kind of engrave it on your memory. And you might not remember your own license plate number, but you'll remember the last sleaze and porn that you looked at. He wants us to be pure and righteous in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds. And if you've messed up in this area, there's forgiveness, my friend. God can make the slate clean for you and you can start all over again. But this is something that is really taking our nation down very, very quickly. It's not just the kids, not at all. It's the adults. They see nothing wrong with it. They see nothing wrong with multiple, multiple partners. But God sees something wrong with it. Save yourself from marriage, a holy covenant before him. It pays huge dividends. So I hope you've gleaned a lot from this week. I thank God that uh, subject so perfect for homekeepers. And God brings us someone that really knows how to deliver the message. So will you please join me next time? Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.